All right. What's next? It's a question we plan to answer regularly on a bunch of topics, but tonight it means what's next for the Democratic Party. Because before last week's election, virtually everybody predicted it would be Republicans in a death spiral, a civil war, pick your cliche. Of course, the opposite happened, and the rest of us are still trying to figure out what that means. Is it Keith Ellison's party now? Joining us now is Democratic strategist and deep insider Julie Reginsky. <laughs> deep insider. So, Julie, I mean, Keith Ellison, I don't want to pile on, probably the most liberal guy in the House, uh, you know, a former protege of uh, Louis Farrakhan's, not a mainstream character, and yet he's gotten the public endorsement of Harry Reid, the outgoing Senate Majority Leader, and then Chuck Schumer, the would be Senate Majority Leader, has also endorsed him. What does that tell us about where the party's going? Uh, I don't think it tells us much. I think there are different factions in the party. I think the party is in disarray, as you pointed out. I think they're trying to find their way. Keith Ellison represents one wing of the party. Look, you have somebody like Chuck Schumer who represents a very different wing of the party, yeah. despite the fact that he endorsed him. And the Democrats need to find a way forward. Look, there are two schools of thought here. One school of thought is to do what Mitch McConnell did, which is to say he wanted to make Barack Obama a one-term president. That was his priority as majority leader. Yep. Uh, it's the same priority potentially for Chuck Schumer to say, I'm going to obstruct Donald Trump every step of the way. The other alternative is you work with Donald Trump when you can on infrastructure spending, which I think Democrats would be behind him on. I'm not so sure about conservative Republicans who don't want to die on infrastructure spending. And you oppose him on other issues where you can. For example, this proposed Muslim registry, which I will register as a Muslim tomorrow if they start doing that. But they're not, I mean, they're going to, obviously, they're not going to come to terms on infrastructure. They're going to put a poison pill in there. That's well, not good for no, them. No, no. I mean, let's be totally real. But let me just ask you, oh. let's just savor the irony for yes. one second. Chuck Schumer, Harry Reid spent the last year telling us in every sentence mm -hmm. that Donald Trump's a racist. He's a bigot. And they just endorsed a guy who was supporting the Nation of Islam and Louis Farrakhan. So can we just at least pause and say, wow, no? Well, as I said, you know, <laughs> if, Donald, if Donald Trump has his way, Keith Ellison might be in that Muslim registry, so he will have his vengeance. <laughs> so look, one of the, I mean, the autopsy is obviously not complete. We're all right. trying to figure out what exactly happened, mm -hmm. what next for the party. But you got to think that identity politics, which Hillary Clinton doubled down on, right. you know, I'm the first woman, all this, et cetera, didn't really work, actually. And maybe it's a dead end that leads to tribalism in the end. Well, do you see the party, Democratic Party pivot toward economic populism instead, do you think? Well, there's two options here, right? One is economic populism, as espoused by Bernie Sanders. Yeah. The other is to say that the Obama coalition, which was very successful in 2008 and 2012, just didn't come out for Hillary Clinton. And that that coalition may potentially come out for the next Democratic nominee, whoever that person may be. So that's the tension in the Democratic Party now. I don't have an answer to that yet, but I think that's what they'll be working through. The third option is to do a little of both, is to say that we need to address the concerns of millennials. We need to address the concerns of minorities who stayed home. We need to make sure that they understand, as Latinos might who voted over, uh, over more for, for Donald Trump, surprisingly to me than they did for Mitt Romney, yeah. that their issues may not be represented by this president. But a lot of it will also depend on what Trump does. Look, Trump has an opportunity now. Trump can do things like infrastructure spending, which I think would attract a lot of Republican support, Democratic support, attract the support of working class people who want to work on those projects, sure. union labor people. Or he can side with the Republicans who don't want to spend an extra dime on infrastructure spending no. and, and, and potentially not he's, do that. He's made it really clear. So last question, quickly. Yes. Democrats have actually lost a historically large number of seats no under question. this president. Mm -hmm. I mean, not just in federal seats, but in state houses. I mean, they don't control anything, really. Mm -hmm. That's Obama who did that. Yeah. Is anybody saying that out loud in the Democratic Party? Uh, a lot of people are saying that Obama... I haven't heard anybody say oh, well, that. Yeah, I'm good. saying um, Obama is saying that because Obama is doing something that I think is very important, which is he's going to focus on getting back to state houses. That's where redistricting comes in. Don't forget, congressional yeah. districts are determined... Oh, I know by people in the state house. So to me, a priority in 2020 is to make sure we have the legislators in place to be able to do redistricting and hopefully get the house Good back. Luck. I thanks. wouldn't put Obama in charge of it. Well, <laughs> I would put Obama in charge of it. You know, he and Eric Holder, they, they, they might have some stuff up their sleeves. I think so. Great to see you, Julie. <laughs> Great Thank to you see for you. doing that.